day one, Summit of Greatness. Headed to the event starting right now. Got my plus one. We got our own section. What's up guys and welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be all about what I learned at the Summit of Greatness event that I just came back from in Columbus, Ohio. No, I did not go to the Olympia this year and I was really upset about it. I really wish I could have met you guys this weekend, but I've had this plan for the whole entire year. Like a lot of you guys might have remembered or have seen me talk about this. I joined a mastermind with Lewis Howe, so if you guys don't know who Lewis is, we're going to like literally dedicate this video to him because he's an amazing human being he's been my mentor for the last year and i've been under his wing along with the rest of the people in the mastermind group so a lot of you guys are wondering like what the heck even is that amanda why is it a mastermind why are you a master what are, what are you doing with your minds like what what even is that i didn't know what it was either trust me i literally had no idea like back in december i didn't know about podcasts i didn't know about masterminds i didn't know about events and the personal development world and business stuff like I was lost, but I've been implementing like very quickly in the last year and I've made like so many strides over the last nine months. We just talked about them at the event and it's just been like so mind blowing and it's all because of this program in Lewis. So what it basically is, is a group of people who are already having success in their lives and their businesses, but they want to take it from here and go to here. And usually when you join, you don't really know how that's gonna happen. You don't know who's gonna be in the group. I had no idea. All the people in my group I've never heard of before, except for one girl, uh, Lori Harder. And like the amount of things that I've learned this year, just based off of some of those key relationships that I made in that group, have helped me not even just like enhance my business, like I've increased my income like for, three times, it will triple this year. But I've just become such a better person. I've become a person that I really want to be. I've become a person that I can be proud of. I'm really clear on who I want to be and what I need to work on. This event this weekend that we just went to was Lewis's main event for the year. It's not just for us, it's for everybody. And then we have a separate event on Saturday. And excuse me if I sound like terrible. I'm, I'm kind of sick. I just took like a two hour nap, it was great. We're gonna talk about the main things, the top three things that I learned this weekend at the Summit of Greatness and talk about the whole entire event. So we get to the event, it is so, the energy is so high, the people in his community are just so energetic and excited to be there and the like community that he's cultivated is just so amazing. We get there and he talks about like the first speaker and this happens. <laughs> incredible like if I was a speaker at his event I would just feel like the coolest freaking person in the whole world because you get introduced with a drum line coming out in front of you with like that song and the highlight reel and absolutely incredible so the first thing that I learned was really that we all have a story that we want to share but there's something that holds us back from sharing it a lot of the time so every single one of the speakers communicated their teaching by telling stories and stories are what makes up our individual individuality. Stories are what helps us connect to the person teaching us something or we're trying to learn from. Here's was really this, this bond and relationship with this father figure who literally put me under his wings and just, you know, I was like a little shadow of his and, um, and trying to develop this tennis dream and from every, everywhere we would go to a tennis academy, we were driving around Florida trying to find a place to train where they were taking on a scholarship because we couldn't pay for boarding. Thank you for silencing me. You led me to break the silence of thousands out there who met humans like you, who chose not to love, not to use their hearts to love, not to use their consciences to be just, and not to use their broken pasts 
to heal the wounds of the broken. Thank you for loving me when you needed someone to love you. You made me believe that in our times of need for love, our hearts are the most beautiful. Thank you for leaving me when I needed you most. You led me to myself. You led me to needing my own heart. You led me to my voice. So without stories, it's easier to just say like, work hard, hustle, and do X, Y, and Z. But if you can explain how you've done that in your own story, then it impacts someone so much harder. But things that hold us back from telling our own stories, a lot of the time, ourselves, we think that we're not good enough to share our story. We don't think our story's good enough. We don't think it's impactful enough. We don't think that we've gone through something important enough to share to other people. We're scared to share it. We don't want to worry about what other people are thinking about us. A lot of the times people judge us for our stories and who we are. A lot of people are really critical. I've learned that here on YouTube. What, what are they getting out of me? not feeling like I've taken care of myself. Why is the focus on them and what they think of what I need? My focus should be on me and what I need to continue moving on in this life. Because at the end of the day, yes, you have a family, you have a community, but you are walking your own path, right? So when you get those comments, picture it like this. You have a home inside of you. And part of that home is self-value and self-worth. If someone points a comment at you, it's like somebody knocking at the door. You open the door, you see who it is. It's a negative comment that tells you something that you know is wrong. You don't welcome it in. You just let it leave. So it's about your perception of what they think of you and how you minimize it that will allow you to let go of that. When you just let go of all of that and you're able to share your story with other people, you're able to make such a bigger impact than if you were to just say something flat out because there's so much free information on the internet now, guys, and the way that you can differentiate yourself from the next person sharing a tip or trick or information or you're teaching something that you've learned that's benefited your life is your story and your experience related to it. Now, it depends, of course, there's different things that are like scientifically based. There's things that are researched, there's things that are studied, there's things that you can't necessarily always share based off of stories, but stories are what is so impactful to other people. Another thing that I've learned this weekend is that you shouldn't start with move number three when you have not yet mastered move number one or two. I'm starting a new chapter in my business and in my life, and I've learned the hard way that I was a stubborn son of a gun. Because you do not advance to the next level of your life and your business until you get the lessons in this one. So I want you to go, as I'm talking, and I want you to think about where are you struggling? Where are you suffering? Where do you write and complain? Because there is a lesson in there. And you can use the things I'm about to teach you in order to close the gap, learn the lesson, and get on with the, with the next great thing that you're going to do. When I first started with Mastermind Group in January, I had so many steps to take before even getting to the moves that I needed to get to, but I didn't realize that. And I wanted to just go forward and, you know, there's, there's people that like had all these systems set up and all these things set up, and I wanted to just have them without thinking about the strategy and the system set up behind them. For example, if you're trying to gain 50 pounds on your squat, you can't just go squat if you don't know how to squat yet. You have to learn the movement patterns. You have to learn how to structure your program. You have to learn how to, like what equipment that you might need. You have to learn how that is going to work in your life and set up a system that is going to allow you to thrive and to reach your goal based off of you. If you haven't accomplished those steps yet, learning how to do it and setting it up for yourself that's going to work for you with a system, you're not going to gain 50 pounds on your squat. You're going to struggle through it. You're going to get injured. Um, you're going to be frustrated and you're, it's going to take 10 times longer to get here because you haven't figured this out yet. So this goes into the third thing I, that I learned, which is like really practical and it's not just an arbitrary thing that I'm telling you guys here, like I learned this and this. This is something that's really practical that you can take away and do right now and it's from Brendan Bouchard. I don't know if any of you guys follow him, but I just recently found him, especially from this event. This guy is 
the number one online marketer in the world. He has the highest open rates and he's had like millions of people buy his programs and be in his academies and stuff like that. This guy flew on his private jet to speak at Lewis's event for free and then he came to speak to us, the group of 20 people that paid Lewis this year to be under his wing for three hours of his time. And he does not do that. Most people do not do that and just go give their time to other people um, if they're not being paid for their speaking engagement or their time, especially these people that are like so widely successful, their time is so important. So he took his time and gave to us, which I am so thankful for. And I wanna share with you guys, if you guys could do one thing purchase his book. What I'm about to tell you right now will go into detail in his book. It's like a deep dive. And if any of this resonates with you, make sure you guys go get the book. So in order to be high performing in all aspects of your life, it's not about your personality. It's not about your personality traits, your characteristics. And you can't just take a personality test and know what you're good at and what you're not good at and that you should focus on these strengths and not on these things. It doesn't tell you what to do next. It doesn't give you a, here's steps that you can take to enhance your achievements and continue to achieve things time and time again in order to take it from here to here. He spent a decade studying this. It's like a scientifically studied thing that he created in this book and like the book is his life's work. So there's six things that all high achievers do consistently and practice consistently that makes them high achievers. And those six things are seeking clarity in their lives, in their businesses, who they want to be, who they want to show up as, what their messaging is going to be. So seeking clarity, generating energy. So generating the right energy, creating enough energy for themselves to send that message. So sleeping enough, taking care of yourself, um, being intentful about what kind of energy you want to put into the world. And and generating that in yourself every single day with whatever you do. Raising necessity is another one. So kind of like if you've competed before, there's no reason for you to stick to something without making it necessary for you to do it. So with a competition and you're on prep, you have to get to a certain point in X amount of weeks and that's like necessary for you to do to get on stage and do well. And people struggle with not doing well because they don't have that like really high pressure to do well but you have to create it for yourself. You have to make it necessary for you to achieve your goals some way, somehow, in order to continue to do them consistently over time. So the next thing is increasing productivity. So I have to increase my own productivity. I struggle to finish things. I'm really good at starting things, super struggle to finish things, and I get really distracted, social media, things like that. I just get really distracted, and it's hard for me to finish things and be and stay productive and focused but high achievers are really productive. They get the fucking work done. Like if they have to write a book, they don't like think about the publisher and they don't think about the launch strategy and they don't think about X, Y, and Z until they write the book, <laughs> if that makes sense. They do the work, they are very productive. They're not just checking things off of a task list, but they're getting the mission critical things completed in order for them to move forward. And that's the difference between a lot of people who are kind of succeeding and then those who are like really, really thriving. These people are getting shit done. They are spending time deep diving and like doing that deep work that's really hard. It's really, really difficult to like focus. And like, for me, it's difficult to see a whole entire project that has to like be finished and I have to start it from scratch and I have to like create these emails and create this video. And it's really hard for me to just like get started. But that stuff is what makes the difference. So increasing productivity. And the next one is developing influence. So influence is something that I talk about often being an influencer. It means that you are changing the way someone thinks. So if you think back to who has influenced you, they've likely changed the way that you think about something, whether it's fitness, whether it's your mindset, whether it's your career, whether it's your relationship, whether it's your family life, whether it's the way that you eat, the way that you think about food, the way that you think about training. Someone who is an influencer and who has developed influence changes the way people think about things. So think about that for yourself and how you can do more of that. And lastly, having courage. So being vulnerable, being open and doing these things that are really, really scary that open you up emotionally, that allows you to move forward and to continue to achieve and putting yourself in a really scary position. So when I joined this mastermind, I was like the baby of the group. I was definitely like 
the lowest achieving at that point. I was not aware of like a lot of the things that they were already aware of, that they had already accomplished. And I was so terrified to be there and to step up and like stand in front of everybody and tell them what my biggest struggles were. I didn't know anybody. When I first moved to Los Angeles, I didn't know anybody. I had to go to a different gym, get a new job. Um, I was just like super struggling with that and I continue to do so. But standing up in the face of fear and having the courage to move forward is what high achievers constantly do. So make sure you get that book. All that stuff is a deep dive into all of those six things that high achievers do. Whew, get hot. Okay. And the last thing that I realized this weekend that I've been really struggling with a whole lot is that you guys have heard me hint a little bit that I've been kind of unclear about what I want to do with this YouTube channel. I consistently still post the videos, but a lot of it is I'm resistant to it because I've just been struggling with what it's been, what my messaging is. Like I'm so used to making informational fitness videos and trust me, I love doing it. I love teaching you guys about fitness and health and food and all of that. And fitness has saved me and it continues to do so. Trust me. It, continues to save my life every single day by having it in my life and then showing you guys how important it is as well. But I'm learning this year and like all throughout the last, I don't know, I'm so, I like love learning about career and business and entrepreneurship, family, relationships, um, spirituality, like all of these other factors of life that are like pizza slices of life and fitness is one of them. And then there's all these other things that I want to share but I built this platform of like 180,000 of you guys from fitness. And I've been struggling to like be okay and not worry about what you guys think when I'm sharing messages like these, because trust me, these videos don't get as many views. And I am one of those crazy creators that's like, you know, only 20,000 people watch this video today. That sucks. Like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's just insane to even think that way. And I know it, trust me, I totally know it. And it, if you can impact 20 people, it's it's like still so good. So sometimes I just like struggle with like my, my messaging and how I want to show up to you guys. So with that being said, something that I learned at the very last minute of this whole entire weekend that Lewis was telling Brian and I is that fitness is, is the, the big cake layer at the bottom of everything else. So all of those other pieces will be at like sevens or eights, maybe if you don't have your self care in check. So if you are not focusing on your health, if you're not focusing on fitness, getting better, doing something active, um, anything that has to do with taking care of yourself and fitness is a huge, huge part of that. That's like the foundational layer. That's like the, the Christmas bow that goes around the present, <laughs> trying to find like a metaphor that makes sense that that wraps the rest of your life and makes it complete and makes it feel good because without the self care, things can crumble and things can easily just crumble under, underneath you. And that's why fitness is so important to your family, to your relationship, to your career, to whatever you're doing in your life, to your hobby, fitness, health in general is so important to that. If you don't have that in check, then things will come crumble. So this video is dedicated to Lewis Howes, who has created a community of conscious achievers who are intentful about their mindset towards how they can achieve greatness in all kinds of ways, whether it's health, fitness, business, entrepreneurship, family life, relationships, all of that stuff. So thank you so much to Lewis Howes, who has created that mindset inside of my head and has instilled that in me and has given me the confidence to move forward and share a message that is my truth and not just what I think my truth should be based off of this channel. So you guys might be seeing some different things here. I'm trying to keep things like my, like what is in alignment with myself and what I want to give to the world and whatever makes me feel good to share, I'm going to do that. So if you guys could do me a huge, huge favor and go in the link in the description box, pre-order Lewis Howes' book, The Mask of Masculinity. It comes out officially on October 31st and just pre-order the book for me, guys. It would really mean a lot to me if you were able to do that for me for Lewis because he's done so much for me and he's really, really, truly helped me. I also put the links in the description box for all of the other speakers who are at the event and their books. So make sure you guys go check them out. I know you guys always are asking me about podcasts and their books. I'm going to link all of those in the description box from this event. You guys have seen clips of it. Thank you so much to Lewis and thank you so much to you guys for giving me this platform and allowing me to share what I'm learning and how I'm growing in all aspects of life. Thank you again and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Oh,
Oh, oh, oh.